everybody that works in this shop plays pipes. You've got to be able to play. All these instruments that are hanging on the walls behind you. Practice chanters, practice pipes, small pipes, highland pipes. You need to be able to play them all. You need to be able to play, you need to be able to sort out reeds for people. First thing that we do in the morning here is we open our website and we look at all the orders that have come in overnight. All the pipey things in here we make ourselves. So we've always got them in stock for either Highland pipes or practice pipes, whatever. We always have them in stock. But there are other bits and pieces like music and reeds sometimes we don't make. As the day goes on, we send out orders and prepare them to be sent out. Um, and yeah, we play instruments for customers when they come in and things. Most of these people that make bagpipes, like Joe Hagen there for instance, has been making pipes for 40 odd years. Wherever it was he started, it would be a shop just like this and there'd be old boys just like Joe making bagpipes. In, in those days, you would just be a trainee and you'd keep your eyes about you and you'd keep your wits about you and you'd learn how to make the, piece, the various pieces, how to blank them, how to turn that into a piece of round wood is the first thing you have to learn to do. There are so many people use programmable lathes and things to turn instruments, which is a shame in some ways. I mean, all our instruments in here are made on real lathes by a guy who does it pretty much by eye. Just to know the difficulties that a bagpipe wood turner has. Um, we went back to college at uh, Jewan-esque College. They do a wood turning course there. It's mainly sort of wood turning and making different things with wood and getting used to the tools. Um, so I found getting used to the tools was helping with um, making bagpipes and repairing different parts of bagpipes. Um, I talked to, but uh, I'm not sure many uh, bagpipe makers are fond of telling their skills and teaching learners on how to make instruments and things. So you go there as an apprentice, maybe four or five years later, you're off. You go and buy yourself a lathe. It's quite a lucrative business. It always has been, and and it, it and it's a it's a one man show. It's a cottage industry. Even famous makers like um, Sinclair's in Leith there who've been making bagpipes. I used to sit there during the war. They're still there, but it's still a one man band. I would hope to do both. Probably make them and then test them and play them and we'd probably adapt some of them, make some of them better, see if we can come up with some new types of bagpipes or something. People at school sort of laugh at you and things when you say you won't be making bagpipes in the future because it's sort of an unusual job. Not a dying art yet. It certainly isn't. <laughs> Especially when people find out how much money you can make by it. <laughs> You'll fall over, come on, you'll start hyperventilating any minute. You might have actually made a noise though.